What's going on, everybody? Bobby Father Man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through tonight's Friday NBA slate. It's going to be a wild one. I'm not going to be here for it. Unfortunately, I'm out the rest of the day. Um, I don't even think I'm going to be able to get my my early builds, which would probably be meaningless because it's going to be absolutely wild. Um, but it's not over yet. The trade deadline. No, it's over, but we don't know who's starting. You don't know who's playing. Oh, okay. Okay. Who Jesus. Okay. Okay. It's just all going to be wild for for at least you know until the All Star break. Um, cause teams are going to try out some things. You're going to get crazy value. And, and as I, yesterday, it was like a little bit of a harder one to get. I mean, it was easy to like get the obvious parts, right. I guess, but like, um, hard to get, you know, every piece, right. The day before I was really frustrated cause I absolutely nailed it. I, I, I said the I played all the guys assuming that Conley and Russell and Beasley were out and I had all of my lineup perfectly. And it's like the one night Nas Reed doesn't snatch and he's low owned and he's starting and no go bear or no anything. And, and it was just like, I just, it was, the game turned into a 30 point blowout. And I, I was so frustrated. I just can't seem to get it right. I thought that night I was going to win all the money. Um, but you know, that, that has been for me. Talk about yours a little bit and then we'll jump into tonight's slate. Okay. So for, I want to share my, uh, I want to share my screen here. So this is, this is, this is actually, are we recording yet? So this yeah. is actually really funny. So I want to share. I want to share my uh, first. Is I want to share my uh, my my five fifty five, and then I want to show you. But I see. I wasn't around yesterday, but I noticed something. This is really really funny. Okay, so this is this ended up being my five fifty five. Um, as I mentioned, you had you needed like either a Kogi, you needed both a Kogi and Aaron Gordon to really smash. But I I had a Ko, the a Kogi part. I didn't have uh, was well, I, I I played the Lawndale who, who didn't do anything, but um. Obviously, Schroeder smashed and uh, Troy Brown Jr. did well enough. So this was this was good enough. You know, this was good enough to get there um, mm -hmm. near the end. Um, but this was this was the funny part. So and I knew this was going to be the case. So I came uh, I came back from whatever from dinner, whatever it was. And I it was halftime or whatever. Uh, no, it wasn't halftime. It was like after the first quarter or something like Nicole Jokic had four fantasy points. Right. Yeah, it means nothing. Now, hold on, hold on. So Nicole Jokic had four fantasy points, and I had like 70% of my lineups with Jokic. Right? And then before I went, I came back and I said, I'm going to just go to Discord and see what's up. And I knew this was going to be the case. So I knew in my head, I'm like, if I can like predict this before I looked at the screen, I was I was going to say, somebody's going to whine. Bobby's going to say, don't worry, he's going to score 50. And he's going to end up scoring 50, right? So <laughs> I went in there and I said, everybody was was complaining. And right, and then you just said no, no worry. Jokic will end up with sixty plus, and he ended, he ended up, he, he actually ended up with like fifty four, and then like, and then like a minute later, the game like a stack correction to fifty eight point five or something like that. Yeah, they, 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 there was a on ESPN, they had already counted the block and the steal, so I knew it was going to get a little bump up. That was um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty funny. Um, no, but it was, I mean, like it wasn't the most exciting slate in the world, like when you have yesterday, but you do have one today with a lot of things to do. And I, it's nice, like it, it, to, to just to cash right this time of year, it feels pretty good. As I, I, oh, I didn't mention, by the way, to, to the people, I was in first place when me and, well, right before me and Sheets got on. And then I got the a bogey, double bogey from, uh, what's his name? Oh, the so golf. <laughs> ninth place in the big one in the golf. So maybe have a sweat up with, with that. Well, dude, we'll do we went last week when I came on and bragged that I was in first place and that my Will Gordon, like, outright bet was in first place. Yeah. The next hole, he made a 10. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, that's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but literally the next hole, he made a 10. So, that's, oh, so that's the right. golf is literally like a worse sport to, like, pre to, to prematurely, to prematurely uh, brag. I promise you that. That's uh, sure. yeah. Last week I was like literally catching for two hundred seventy nine thousand going into like day three or three and a half, and ended up like losing money for the for the week. When, so, when you've had the month and a half that I've had, and and you play four golf lineups, period, to be yeah, in the right. big one solo is always a good feeling. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that was where I was coming from. Um. Anyway, uh, all right. So with all this said, let's you already uh, pull up we got the slate pulled up. Yeah, here. so it's funny. So I'm looking at my sheets sheets for the first time as I as I pull up my the, the DraftKings thing, and I do see a, just all just a truckload of, of value here. Um we'll get to it when we get to it, but I wasn't expecting this. But I guess like you said, you know, probably a lot of people aren't playing and a lot of guys are on teams we don't even know about, but we'll uh I guess we'll get to that. When we get to it. I got an eight point five x projection on some guy. We'll 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 get to we'll get to all of that. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, all right. 
Oh, I'll tell you who got really lucky yesterday. I wouldn't say lucky because he actually did this with, with this anticipation. My friend Jack, who who literally is like the hot, he's like the sharpest like non-professional handicapper in the world. That yeah, I speak about him all the time. I mean, he was been, been rolling in 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 in, uh, in wins with with college basketball. Uh-huh. He, when I was with him in Vegas, he bet on on Phoenix to win like the conference or something like that, plus like pretty big odds. And he was he was suggesting to me, well, well, well when they get Durant. They're going to be like a bigger favorite. And this is back in July, right? Right. And and so they finally got him, and they got him like a couple of days ago. So he's, he's 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 in he's feeling really good right now. Yeah. No, it's 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 wild. Um. Yeah. I don't know if they can, but I, I still the division. I actually have to double check that. I think they have a better chance to win the title than they do the division. Um. Right. right. Unfortunately. Um, all right, but let's let, you know jumping into that though is from a from a DFS standpoint. And by the way, that, that is pretty amazing. I, I, I love speculative bets like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's anything in this this uh, this Phoenix Indiana game that stands out as something you need to do. Um, I don't think you need to play Nemhard at 3900 or Nee Smith. Uh, there's other value I'd rather I'd rather take shots with rather than this normal value we get all the time. I really don't have anything in this game. I mean, you can always talk Halliburton. It's back to back. Chris Paul will even play on the back to back. That's an interesting question. But Devin Booker will play, and Aiton probably will play, and, and even Chris Paul, as right now, is look like looks like he's projected to play. So I, I'm I'm off of everything. Uh, all things being considered, uh, as of right now, so I'm I'm not really interested in anything here. Yeah, um, I'm not so sure that Booker plays. Um... But it's it's possible. They announced this morning that he's he's probably. Oh, oh, I didn't see that. Okay, the last thing yeah. I see is four o'clock. All right, very good. Yeah, um, yeah. So with Booker in, I'm not really getting that much. I mean, Aiton looks, you know, Aiton's back to being, you know, reasonably projected. Um, <clears throat> and if there was not enough, listen, if there wasn't all this value on the slate, I would say let's let's try to find these middling guys like the Butlers and the Aitons, and you know, you know those price tags I like. But with all these all these guys that are looking to be really cheapos, and and the ability to. You have to say Luca, you know, Embiid, Giannis, and whatever. Um, I don't know if these mid-range plays are going to be that great. So uh, I don't, I don't really have much in this game either. Yep. All right, let's move on. Um, what do you got next? I have the Knicks in Philadelphia. All right, so Knicks and Philly. Um, this is another one where on the Knicks side, I really don't have anything. Um, and it's the same old, you know, the same thing as always. You could always play some of the, you know, take shots at some of these guys. They won't have, uh, what's his name? They won't have Hart tonight, I don't believe. So it's it's sort of the same situation we've seen with them most of the year. Uh, maybe it's the last the last chance for RJ Barrett to to keep his, keep his job, really, um, which is weird to say. I mean, it, not really. He'll he'll keep playing, but I, I'm wondering how much down the stretch he plays. Considering Hart, they now have three good defenders, and he is not one of them. Um, and nobody, nobody on Philly particularly stands out. I don't. A large field. I don't think I'd mind a shot on Indy Anthony Melton. I just think there's better value out there. And I always, you know, look. Embiid is always in play as a spend up, but no, nobody who stands out for me here. Well, hold on a second. So. Who did you say the Knicks got? They got Josh Hart. Yeah, yeah. This is this is how little I know. Um, oh, you the amount of the number of just weird little trades that happened at the end. Were, is he, is he, but he's not in the lineup. He's not on the team yet. Right. I don't see him as a, as as dressing tonight yet. But I don't have that official. I don't even see him in, 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 the, in the in the in the the field. I don't even know if you're allowed to play him, but he That's might I mean. to play. He still may end up starting. Oh, one of those. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. It could be one of those. Um, I'll tell you this. I like um, I like Embiid. Uh, mm-hmm. I just you know as for what I just mentioned, you know, you, you have the ability to play spend ups, and Embiid's always uh, some uh, spend up you can consider. His last last game, notwithstanding, you know what I mean. Like, listen, you give me thirty nine minutes, uh, I'll, I'll I'll take my chances <laughs> if you want to know the truth. Um, so yeah, I think he's a spend up that you can play and. Uh, uh, I don't really see much else. Uh, I don't see anything on the Knicks at all. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm at. Um, all right. Uh, next up, we have the San Antonio at, at Detroit. Um, this is an interesting one. Let's, this is going to start off the value part of it. I'll, you know, Zach Collins, Collins or Bassey, I've got to play the minutes here to get there. Like, I mean, they they, so they traded Podol. As he, and that's another one I called sheets. I said, Hodel is playing for the Spurs back against his former team. 
and he's probably going to get traded to them by the end of the day. Sure enough, the next day morning, he gets traded to Toronto after San Antonio was playing in Toronto. I was like, well, I really, I wish I could have bet on that one because that was just a speculation thing I'd heard a while ago. Anyway, um, lots of Q tags for the Spurs. Really impossible to judge at this time of the day because Sohan, Keldon Johnson, Trey Jones, Bassey, and Langford are all questionable. So I don't really know how to break this game down outside of at the moment, you probably want to play or at least consider playing one of Collins or Bassey, but you're going to get some other good value at this spot too. Collins is going to be the obvious one. Um, but I think Bassey, you know, we know he's got upside anyway. So both those guys are really interesting and uh, are, are the definitely preferred guys for me in San Antonio. I, I don't mind these guys on Detroit who are all grading out pretty well. Diallo, Hayes, Ivy, Diallo, wide range of outcomes, but a huge ceiling. So I have no problem with that. And then I think I would go Ivy as my second favorite. Hayes is my third. Um, Isaiah Stewart, you could argue he gets a boost too without uh, Sadiq Bey. But I think they're being a little bit over projected right now. So I might actually take the, you know what? They still have 12 guys they can play and and I, I may just stay off of it. What are, you, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, so San Antonio, uh, I'm getting Zach Collins as the play. Uh, I have projected currently at 30 and a half fantasy points at 4K. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm getting for, I'm projecting him at 27 minutes. I don't see a lot of upside from that. You know, he just doesn't play that much, I don't think. Yeah. Um, so that's something, to, you know, something to keep an eye on. Um, but he certainly projects to be a really, really strong play. Nothing else for me on San Antonio and Detroit. Yeah, I mean, all these guys look reasonable enough. You know, Killian Hayes would be my, I guess, my favorite. Um, and like you said, Diallo, can, you know, he might be able to put up a nine, you know, or maybe a 40, you know, whatever. Right, right. One of the uh, other. Dur Duran is, is always really good, but, you know, center is always very competitive. Uh, Ivy, I suppose. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with you. I, 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 again, currently, like Collins looks like a really, really strong play, though, from this game. And, uh, and I guess so if I had to prioritize Collins, then maybe Killian Hayes would be my favorite to bring up. Yeah. And 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 I, I do think that playing that all these guys for Detroit makes sense. It's just they're all it's spread out a little bit. I, I I'm looking at it like I think feel like I should be playing them. Maybe Killian Hayes is a better play than I gave him credit for. Maybe, maybe Hayes over Ivy. Hayes and Ivy are both good plays. Um and Diallo is an interesting play off the bench, but um it's gonna you're gonna just have to weigh this against other value later today. All right, so let, let, let me let me, I'm I'm going to to start with with the yeah. Charlotte. So, what we have is we have um, uh, uh, Evan created this kind of like this this search function where you could search for you know different blurbs about players on YouTube or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I still want to want to go back is like if 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 I say something or you say something that we can refer to like kind of right away to be able to pull up the clip. Okay, so I want to go back in like for the last like two or three years or something like that. Each time you, you you said this, and then each time afterwards, if we didn't do it, you said, "How can we not do this?" Whatever it is. So we're just gonna remember. Okay, yeah, obviously this at all would be great if if Lamelo was out, but we don't care. We have Tarot's year going back to Boston. You just have to play it, okay? And 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 each time that I come with some reason why I shouldn't, he just gets fifty anyway. Okay, so I, whether he projects for 80, 12, 9, whether LaMel is playing or not. Look, LaMel is not playing, whereas you'll be popular. So good. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is, in, in in reality, I'm getting, because Plumlee is out, like literally an eight and a half X projection on Mark Williams. Um, mm -hmm. So that is something you're going to have to deal with. And then, if that's not difficult enough, I'm getting like a seven X projection also for Nick Richards. <laughs> that's the mm -hmm. backup center, I guess. Um, so I, I imagine that you want to play, you know, one of those guys. Um, and I'm seeing Mark Williams is right now the 35% owned guy and the Nick Richards, the nine. Um, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. But, but I think obviously with Plumlee out, you're supposed to play one of those two. So for me, uh, uh, Terry Rozier, regardless of, of projection, and then one of those two centers for, uh, for Charlotte. And then on the Boston side, uh, sure. Why not? You could, you can get to Tatum pretty easily. Um, with the value out there, so why not do it? So that's my com that's my comment. Yeah, another little tilting one the other night with Tatum and and Embiid combining for eighty fantasy points when Jalen yeah. Brown gets hurt and uh, nationally televised game. It was very frustrating. Yeah. Um, if you played both of them, which I did, so 
I I really think like you just if you're gonna do the Terry Rozier thing, I probably would want to think of something to run back because I, I don't like Terry Rozier's price is too high. I think um, I do like the match. I do like that he's going to Boston. I and he always does take shots. I think they're gonna get rolled here. I think they're gonna get absolutely smashed. They only have nine bodies against Boston in Boston. I really have a hard time seeing this game staying close for more than maybe the first half, but I'll, I don't, I still don't mind taking the shot on Rozier. Um, I like, I like that call by you because it is, a, it's a, there's a unknown, completely unknown guy that you can just, you can play a narrative on and he, and he will take shots. I, I don't see LaMelo as even questionable. So I'm assuming LaMelo plays. Um, uh, and, and then I, I would prefer Williams over Richards, which I think will be the, the overwhelming take. But if you have a really chalky build, I uh, don't mind if you want to just switch it around. We haven't seen Mark Williams play more than 22 minutes before. So uh, you could you could definitely take a shot at Richards instead. But Mark Williams does feel like he's he's going to get there, whether they get blown out or not. Um, and then if you're going to play on the other side, I think that uh, Brogdon, I think Brogdon and uh, Tatum are both interesting plays as well as Horford. But nobody who's like a priority and. Even Robert Williams, like in this matchup, I think is good enough to take a shot on. I, I, I just want to try to attack Charlotte. So maybe, maybe like if I was going to play him, I actually think Robert Williams might be my favorite run back. The problem is that center position has all the value. So I don't know how to do it, you know? But what do you think, bud? What do you think of playing P.J. Washington in a spot like this? I mean, with without the real yeah. centers. I mean, like he could play, he'll pick up some rebounds. Maybe he plays some at the five. Who knows? I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I doubt, I don't think they'll, they'll eh, maybe they would a little bit play him at the five. Um they tend to play these other guys when, when, you know, it's keep that one big man in there, but, but I think PJ Washington's okay. I just don't think there's anything like special about it. You know, 5,900, there's going to be other guys we talk about. Well, mostly the problem is you're going to get this extreme value that guys like that fitting them in. Is he really the best 5,900 guy we can find? I don't think so, but I do think he's, I do think he's okay. I did play him the other night when he had a really nice game. So that was good. Um, all right, what do you got next here? It's uh, yeah, so we gotta figure out who's playing here, right? So so right. let's first of all let's see Westbrook. All right, Westbrook is not playing. Okay. Yeah, he's not in. Clarkson is questionable. Uh and but he's played every game. Uh but he's a late injury, late addition to the injury report, which is not great for him. But all of that is really good for Colin Sexton. Um, at 4K. So Colin Sexton is already projecting, oh my God, he's another one. He's projecting over 7X and he's projecting, I think it says 724% ownership. Actually, it says 36%. But uh, especially if Clarkson is out, I mean, that's going to be, that's a really, that's a really strong play. Um, and then uh, what else from this game? Uh, I'm not, really seeing too much uh what what do you got here i'm not really understanding the projections on the utah guys i don't really agree with them uh, outside of sexton um horton tucker would be your larger field play uh got there the other night and blow out run um but sexton is the obvious one i i don't understand why why all the other guys are projecting as poorly as they are i i would go right back to to clarkson um and I would consider Olenek as well. I also think this game has some blowout possibilities. Um, so, I, I I mean, for me, Sexton is the obvious one, the most obvious one. Um, I probably won't play T him and THT, wouldn't play him and THT together. It's not the worst if you do. But um, I think Sexton, and, and if you want to get in, if you want to get pieces on the other side, Sexton and Clarkson, and you <laughs> If Podol's supposed to play tonight, I, I don't think I would want to play Podol, but I'm kind of interested to see how they use him. And again, with, at that loaded center position, I do think Siakam is like it's a really good matchup for him, but probably going to be off of Toronto because of just how many good plays there are on the slate. So mostly it's going to end up being Sexton for me or THT, THT from this game. Uh, Houston, Miami, um, you know, it depends on how you want to build. I mean, that's obviously a really good, I mean, it's a really good, whatever. It's a, it's a good matchup, I guess, for Miami. Um, so if you want to go middling, you can play Bam and or Butler. And that makes sense. Aside from that, uh, really not getting anything. And I'm, I'm just kind of done playing guys against Miami. So I'm not going to take shots at any of the Houston guys. Um, so again, it just depends on how you build. I think both Butler 
and Bam could put up good games, but I mean, like you say, sometimes is is this like the game that Butler scores sixty? Probably not. You know, um, okay. uh, this is this is like the one hundred two to eighty four game, probably. Um, right, right. That's that. That's my opinion. So probably probably not much for me in this game. Yeah, like I mean, if it was a different slate, maybe I would talk about Deshaun Tate a little bit. Like, but I I, I don't I don't think so. Um, Gabe Vincent, like really weird. He's 200 more. He was mega chalk. This slate has other value. So I kind of get it, but that slate had value too. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, Vincent is, is fine. Everybody on Miami looks fine, but nobody I'm rushing to play. If I had to pick one, I think I would probably pick hero uh, followed by Butler followed by Bam, but it's a great matchup for all of them. It wouldn't surprise me if any of them went crazy. I just personally don't, don't feel the, the, like the need to play these guys, but I do think that uh, that all hero Butler and Bam are certainly in play. All right, what do we have next? The Minnesota have... Memphis. Yeah. Okay. So um, why don't you start this one? Out? This is an interesting. Yeah, I don't see too much on the value side, but as far as just guys that can score here, um, yeah, I mean Ja ten six again, same thing. I mean you can you can get to these guys and and, and Anthony Edwards, which. Kind of, kind of looks like a tough price to pay, but, but you know, it's 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 slate relative. Um, uh, you can certainly you can certainly do it. So I, I have no problem with either of those guys, Jai and, and, and Edwards. I wouldn't I wouldn't be fishing for for mid range stuff. I wouldn't be fishing for value here. I would probably either play one of those two guys or nothing. Um, yeah, it, it, this is going to depend on whether Mike Conley plays tonight. It's, if Mike Conley doesn't play, Jalen Noel is a, along with Sexton the best plays in the slate. Um, oh, Jalen Noel, you think still going to look good? Yeah. Yeah, if, if there's no Sexton. And, and also, uh -huh. Barron and Kyle Anderson may not play again. Both of them we are got that good. stuff going on again. Okay. Yeah. So then you have, and I don't care if he had one, if he let us down one time, you go right back to Nas Reed. You go back if, if the both those if, if all three of them are out, Conley, Gobert, and Anderson, I have no problem with Edwards Price at 10K. Um, and then you're talking about guys like Torian Prince also. Um, but I but I would say that if Conley is out, Noel is is he and Sexton would be lock buttons for me. If Conley plays, I still kind of like Noel, but I just don't think it's the right slate for it. <clears throat> um on the Memphis, and by the way, maybe they should let these guys roll a little bit on their own. They, they just won by 30 the other night on the road without – get rid of D'Angelo Russell. A lot of good things can happen. Unfortunately, now right. he's a freaking Laker. Um, and, on the, yeah, Memphis aside, it's just uh, basically do you want to play Ja? Do you want to play Bain? I don't I don't see any um, over-the-top reason. I do think it's a good enough – it's a good enough matchup for, for Ja. But um, – Somehow, you know, it doesn't, doesn't like scream like, oh, you need to play him or anything. But I think he's totally fair at 10-6. It's really going to depend on what happens with Minnesota. If those guys are out, I might want to, you know, play John and get three guys on the other side or something. But um, fortunately, it's a little bit earlier tonight. It's not like the, you know, the mo there's a lot of games still afterwards. So I, I probably will, you know, try to see what I would try to see what I hear throughout the day. Because I, I do think that, the, like I said, that Noel value – uh, the other night, you know, he was 18% owned in a spot where he was projecting nine X. Um, and he put up, yeah. put up 51 fantasy points. He went 20, almost what 16 X or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I would, I would, uh, I would certainly keep an eye out on this thing for Noel because he can put up a ton in a hurry and it's just going to matter what happens with Gobert, Conley and Anderson for everybody else. All right. Um, nothing left. To, it says to 10 p.m. games. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at this Cleveland um, New Orleans game and I almost wonder if I'm just not, I'm missing some players because I, I don't see much of a projection for anybody that's worth mentioning. I mean, Mitchell, I mean, not really. Um, You'd like to think that you want to play these guys against New Orleans, or maybe New Orleans is not the team to attack that we think it is. I'm not sure. Uh, Ingram, 7,600, I guess he would be my favorite for New Orleans, but he's, I'm telling you, he's so far down the list of guys for me. Um, I just don't think I'm, I just don't think I'm going to get there. Um, I see Rubio is out. And maybe that means something, but everybody else is in. So I don't know. Maybe this game is just a pass. Uh, I, I happen to like Ingram a lot. I don't really, I don't, I don't think they priced him up enough. And um, 
I, I'll, I'll, I'll continue like without, without Zion Ingram should be like 8,500. I feel like um, he's put up 45 or more three games in a row since he basically got his minutes back. I, even in a tough matchup, I have no problem playing him here. So I'm good with him and I'm, I'm fine with taking a shot on Joe Bell and no one's going to play because that center spot. I'm just trying to throw out other centers because the, the, the obvious value centers are there with Collins and, and Williams. I'm just throwing out some other guys you can consider. Um, on the Cleveland side, I only have like, I, I think Donovan Mitchell is a really good tournament play um, just because of the upside. So I would take a shot with Donovan Mitchell on a slate like this. Donovan Mitchell versus Jimmy Butler. I don't care what the median score is. I think there's more of a an excuse, uh, more of a reason for Mitchell to have a big game here than there is for Butler, basically. Same price. That's why I said it. All right. Um, Dallas Sacramento Sheets, go ahead. Yeah, so Luca, um kind of hoping he's back. Um, I mean, I think he's going to be back, but who knows? Um, anyway, uh, he's, you know, perfectly viable spend up. Uh, you're deciding, maybe not even deciding between, but alongside of Embiid, Tatum, Lillard, and Giannis, you know, all these guys are are, are really in play. And Luca, you know, he's got a hundred point upside. <laughs> you know, against Sacramento, you know, every, you know, he's got big upside there. So I, I'm, you can get to him easily. No problems. Um, Sacramento, uh, Sabonis would be my favorite. Um, and again, you're seeing a, a kind of a, a common theme here. I mean, I, I, I'm not really, you know, going into the mid range all too much. Maybe I should do more of that. But I just see all this freaking, all this three Ks and four K guys you can play. Yeah, that I, I'd be more inclined to just just try to overspend for the studs than try to play like some Harrison Barnes or some, you know what I mean, or somebody else like that. So. For me, it'll either be Luca or Sabonis, or just kind of just let someone else play those two guys. Yeah, I, I, I you know, and that's I, I think that overspending is a good way to put it, and I think that's that, that's a good that's a good way to look at it tonight. Like getting the raw points th- th- does help, like because of these, you know, you have these you have these studs in the slate, and you have this value. The only problem is is the ceiling. A little, yeah, it's a little lower than for Luca than it probably was before with with Kyrie there. Um, and it's a little, you know, the the Sabonis price doesn't feel totally comfortable. But at the same time, if if, if these guys are if the, if the three and four K guys are getting thirty and forty, you know, and your your big guys are only five Xing, you're probably okay. Yeah. Um, so you know, and and, and there's some there's some mid tier guys I mentioned that I like, like uh, I like Mitchell, I like uh, Ingram a little bit as a back and forth in that game. But I do think Luca is completely viable if he does go if he is a go and. Uh, no problem with Sabonis on the other side, even though he's not a priority or anything for me right now. Dude, there's a lot of fantasy points that coming up in these these games, man. You're, They're going to be nice. You're right. I mean, then, then you get right to, to Oklahoma City, Portland, and uh, and you just have my you know full permission to play Shea and Lillard. You know what I mean? You could totally do it. Um, and you know, no one's going to tell me these guys can't both put up 65 points or something like that. So, uh, sa- same kind of thing. Except there is one. Um, couple of things I might do. There's a value piece here that I want to ask you about. I'm getting a 7X project projection from Nasir Little from Portland. So I want you to address that for me because I haven't played him in like forever. You have Eubanks, unfortunately, at the wrong position for him tonight. Um, and then, as usual, when we talk about Oklahoma City and I bring up Shea, you you, you sometimes, you know, suggest maybe uh, Giddy might be a better play, uh, you know, obviously a more affordable play, but maybe a uh, a, a different play than Shea, but aside from those, you know, main guys, I mean, again, I'll play Shea, you know, just cause I can, I'll play Lillard because I can. And I want you to talk to me about the, about this year little. Yeah. I, I'm not overly like, I, I'm not overly interested in Shea or, or, or Lillard. They're fine. Um, I think they're, they're, I have to have no problem. If you want to choose them as your spend ups, I'll probably side with the Giannis or something. Um, but I have no interest in this year, Little. Um, it's fine if you if you if you want to go with the maximum number of value guys. I don't think this is a lockdown spot, and I think that he's still like what's his minutes projection? His minutes projection at thirty. I, I could easily see that being way less than thirty. Um, Shaden Sharp also like he's projected to play thirty minutes also. Um, like one of those guys, if it was me, I would just take the lower projected by a couple fantasy points, shade and sharp, and and go with that probably. Right. Uh, but I, 
I personally am, am those are that, that's value that I'm I'm not not especially interested in today. But I I'm, I mean look it's it, it's if it was another slate you would you would be very into it. But like you still have Jeremy Grant, Simons, Lillard, and Eubanks there. I actually think Eubanks and Watford. Um, Again, one of those guys, I, I'm, I'm still okay with the idea of trying them, but it's probably not the right slate to do it anymore. Um, it's the same thing with Jalen Williams on the other side in OKC. He put up a big ceiling game the other night. Um, so really, I'm like kind of struggling with this game, to be honest. It's got a great pace. Maybe maybe you're right. Maybe you do just play the studs and and, and hope, it, hope they shoot what, out. What about, what about Jeremy Grant? You just brought him up, but I think he does rate okay for me. I mean, it's not somebody who would play all too often. He's been playing like 42 minutes a game, right? I mean, He's playing a ton of minutes. They're trying to win games at home. He's better. Um, he's been playing all these minutes and yet he's projecting at a number that he's projecting at 39 fantasy points. He's put up over 33 one time in the last 12 games. Um, <laughs> I'm always suspect of guys like that. All they lost was Josh Hart. Josh Hart is not a high usage guy. You know, this is not like they, they lost a million guys here. Um, obviously they don't have Nurkic already, but I don't know. I'm a little bit lower on the projection for these guys. So I'm not very interested in Jeremy Grant personally. It's, it's fine. But like if he happens to get there, I'm, I'm going to play him at 20 some odd percent at a number that he never gets to. Feels, feel, just feels wrong. Um, um, this game, and, I yeah, and, then, and then, I mean, now that at the end of the night, you get, um, you get Giannis uh, on a, uh, you know, really, really nice game. By the way, uh, uh, before I forget talking about Lillard, Lillard in his last game, that was, I think, I mean, I, I heard the announcers right. Only, I guess, his second career triple double. That was That'd pretty be, surprising to me, actually. Yeah, yeah, I get um, it. He's not much of a rebounder. Nonetheless, so you get Giannis, uh, you know, back to back. Well, it's LA, LA back to back, but which you you could consider that one of uh, you could consider that one of the worst back to backs. The LA with no travel, right? You get to have, right. To, have to spend the whole night in LA, you know. Whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially on a night where, you know, listen, they had, uh, what's his name, and LeBron give a whole thing at the, uh, they have uh, give a whole thing at the end of the whatever. They, it was really funny. They interviewed viewed, uh, Giannis afterwards. Guys, awesome. I love, I love Giannis. They were saying, yeah. uh, they were saying, uh, so you've been following the, uh, the, uh, the trade talks, or whatever. It's like, no, I, I, I don't even, I don't even keep my phone. I have someone else deal with my social media. I can't get distracted by looking at it or something like that. And, uh, and then he was saying that, uh, He's, he's now he's trying to be a coach. He's trying to be, you know, he was being very, very funny about it. Like he has to manage players and all this stuff. So anyway, I mean, he'll be, he'll be ready to go, but you know, there is definitely sort of a letdown when you, from that environment into this, into the Clipper one, mm-hmm. but um, uh, yeah, he's still a really good play. And there's another one where, I mean, he's going to project, he projects like crap, but I mean, with no Kawhi, I mean, I'll, you know, I might play Paul George just for fun, you know, in this game. Um, so, uh, Norman Powell is like, it's not this slate, you know, I don't need like kind of a, like a blah looking 5,700 player. You know what I mean? Um, so maybe, maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll try like a, which probably going to be a really low owned Paul George in this game. But I think Giannis is, I, I don't know how, I don't know how to separate any of these guys. Uh, Giannis Tatum, I, I guess you have to put Luca a little worse because of Kyrie you probably have to put and beat a little worse because of the position, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because of the center. So I guess that Giannis would probably be the best play, even even though it's on a back to back. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never minded Giannis on back to backs. Um, uh, he just has a different energy that he plays with in every game. The only time that I've seen it not happen is in Miami for some reason. Um, so I, I, I think Giannis is my favorite spend up, and I love Paul George as a run back on the other side. Um, I think that's a really, a really good way to go. It also allows you, you know, and then you, 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 what I would say is that like, but you know, those, those are my favorite. Like, I like those guys. I like Brandon Ingram in the mid range. I like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, I think Donovan Mitchell with no ownership in that, you know, ESPN game. I think that he and Ingram on either side of it are both kind of interesting. Um, but my favorite spend up is going to be Giannis. I would, I would have him as my highest own. And then if I was going to get into a bunch of lineups, I would start doing some things like you mentioned with the Shea and, and Shea on one side, Lillard on the other. Um, I do think just the low ownership on Embiid is, it always kind of suckers me in. And, and, and I think that's, that's reasonable tonight. You have Tatum against Charlotte on an ESPN game with no, uh, Jalen Brown. 
all of these guys are, are look like pretty decent spend ups, but I'm signing the most with Giannis as my ultimate spend up. Probably would go Tatum, Embiid uh, as the next uh, guys over 10K for me. And then I would get into the Shea and Lillard thing um, personally, unless the only problem is the great thing about playing those late games, though, is if all those guys are out for Minnesota, I would go back to Edwards as a priority ahead of these guys, actually. Yeah, so my my again my 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 priority is you're pretty much everybody over 10k and everybody over under 4k, right? Right. I'm um, presuming that I, I'm including Sexton as under 4k. Right? Yeah. And but if I had to pick two guys to put that they're not either above 10k or below or 4k or below, it would be Paul George, uh, and the the ultra aforementioned Terry Rozier as just the one percent owned doesn't fit in anybody's build projects for zero type play that that could that could just do it so that that's going to be my those that those will be my my hoodoo so to speak yeah that makes sense um one other guy i'm going to mention just as as value that maybe other people won't use but will a guy you can use for placeholder value in case we get different things later in the day is terrence mann um Mm -hmm. he certainly has a chance to get there anyway without Kawhi. but even with Kawhi, he was you know playing pretty well and you know 32 in the last game 29 in the game before that so it's not like if you get stuck with him, you're in bad shape, but I kind of like the idea of, of doing that with the later guys and then seeing if other guys sneak into the starting lineup or something else interesting happens that makes us, you know, somebody's announced out that makes us want to play somebody else. So I would try to delay your value. You're not going to be doing it, doing it in every case. I would, if the slate locked right now, I would have Mark Williams um, in almost all my lineups and the ones he wasn't in, I probably would have Nick Richards. Um, I would have Sexton in basically all my lineups. I would have Collins in a lot of my lineups. So that, and, and, Noel, and Noel, if you get the news you want, I mean, like, and, and well, yeah, and then if you get the news you want, then that's that's why like you play Terrence Mann, and then if 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 Conley is out or whatever, um, but that's actually later though, and that's earlier in the day, so we should know. Uh, oh no, it's not. It's uh, Conley would be yeah. So yeah, I, I, so that's that that's the kind of thing you're looking out for. Um, the Conley games at eight. But I would obviously rather play Noel over Terrence Mann if, if Conley's out. But if Conley's in, sticking with Terrence Mann is not the worst thing in the world. So, And the, uh, and the other, by the way, the other mid-range guy that I would play is the guy that you mentioned already, that uh, the Brandon Ingram. He's, he's the other one. So yeah. Ingram, Ingram, the 10% owned Ingram, the 1% owned Rozier, and the 5% owned Paul George. Those would be my, uh, those would be my, 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 my ways to get different. I'm, I'm into that, and I just want to add, though, I'm going to keep emphasizing this. I really think Donovan Mitchell's a really good tournament play tonight. That's 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 a good one, too. No one's going to play him, and I really think this is the kind of game where he could have an explosion. And he's he's another guy. Well, like, well you know what? You play Mitchell and Ingram together, and now you're now you're back up. That's what I was gonna. That was what I was gonna say. If you can find a way to get Mitchell Ingram, there's no. I don't think financially it quite works out. Mitchell Ingram, Giannis, and Paul George. And the value would be like my, my my something around those things would be what I'd be trying to build. Well, hold on, let's let's let's, uh, let's see if we can do it. Let's. I wonder where it puts it. Let's 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 just for fun. Um, well, the problem is, is that George can George play play forward now? I, I don't know what they did with him today. That, that would be that would be nice if he could. Yes, he can. So we put him there, and then then who do you say? Um, uh, who's the other guard? You said you needed Sexton. Mitchell, oh Ingram. So we're almost there. Hold on. So we put Ingram here. You gotta save seventeen hundred somehow. I'm even giving Nasty or little. So it's this is gonna be tough. That's tough. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be tough. Can't, can't quite can't quite do it. it. Can't quite do that. But uh, yeah. Um, but you get rid of Paul George, and then and then you then you can play something else. Yeah, I mean, but somewhere along those those guys lined, I mean, and and you don't like like as much as I like Mitchell, I'm not saying you have to play him or have to play Paul George. I just think that those are the kind of guys I'd like to pair with my spend up of Giannis, right. um, along with Ingram. So should be a fun slate. I'm sorry I'm not going to be here for it, guys. Um, I I'll, be, I'll I'll be uh, I should be uh, available to do live. Okay. Um. So I will see you guys all at about six. Okay. And um, you, we're going to do something on Super Bowl Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby will just just watch the Discord. Bobby will let you know when we're doing that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll get in touch with the sheets about it, and I'll, I'll let you guys know in Discord when, when, we can, when I figure out the time. All right, sounds good. All right, thanks, guys. Good luck to everybody tonight, and uh, let's make some money.